greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. Well, I said it was gonna happen, and surprise, surprise, it did. Field of the Dead is banned. In fact, two of the cards I predicted would get the ban hammer did indeed get the ban hammer for two different formats. That's one of the things I love about being a content creator is it enshrines when I'm right. I mean, obviously it enshrines when I make mistakes as well, but I can go, yeah, I called it back here. I said it was gonna happen and it did. So Fields of the Dead has been given the Bird Hammer in standard. And it's a good feeling because I did not enjoy that deck's nonsense at all. And Arkham's Astro Lab, Astro Lab, for those of you who are going to be like, stop calling it Astro Lab. Anyways, that got banned in Popper. So we have one card banned in standard, Field of the Dead. One card banned in Popper, Arkham's Astro Lab. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through the official announcement, read that off for you, we will discuss it, and then I want to talk about why you should be picking up Fields of Dead in your arena account today. I know it's a weird thing to say, but stick around and we'll discuss why. So, the article talking about these bannings starts out, Standard. Since the standard rotation, one of the strongest and most metagame-defining decks has been a ramp deck that uses Golos, Tireless Pilgrim to find Field of the Dead. The deck has not only maintained a high win rate and metagame share, but has also restricted the space of viable competitive strategies in Standard. Field of the Dead's ability to produce a constant stream of zombie tokens for little resource investment gives the strategy an often inevitable win condition in long games, making it difficult for traditional control decks or other ramp decks to go over the top with a more powerful late game. On the other end of the spectrum, ample anti-aggro tools and fast ramp enable the deck to defend itself against traditional attack decks before shoring up the ground with defensive zombie tokens. This has forced the metagame into extreme positions, with hyper-aggressive red decks and Planeswalker heavy decks being among the only archetypes to consistently put up favorable results against Field of the Dead decks. And this is the kind of thing that I would see with people coming into my streams or in the comments section. They would pick these corner cases that could defeat Field of the Dead and then go, Field doesn't need a ban. Look at these few things they can handle it without really taking into account how much it was warping the field around it. Now the article continues, beyond just the strength of the strategy, Field of the Dead presents a number of other problems for the metagame. The repetitive onboard nature of its effect can cause games to frequently play out in a similar deterministic way. Since Field of the Dead is a land, it can be difficult for many archetypes to interact with, further limiting the metagame's ability to adapt. Finally, the long-term advantage Field of the Dead provides often leads to prolonged games. We've observed a marked increase in matches going to time in tabletop tournaments and in average game length in digital play. And these are both points that I had discussed when I originally brought Field of the Dead up as my most likely candidate for banning. I said it was the highest chance of the card, any card getting banned was Field of the Dead. And it makes perfect sense. It, when they say it's difficult for many archetypes to interact with, what they're saying is Fields of the Dead is a land. And in Magic the Gathering, over the years, they have reduced the number of ways that you can interact with your opponent's lands. Land destruction has been made more expensive. You won't find land destruction spells for less than four mana. Unless you consider something like Assassin's Trophy to be land destruction, but in that case, it allows them to get a land to replace it. So it doesn't have the same sort of issues. Even when it comes to blue bounce spells, we used to have cards like Boomerang, which would allow you to return any permanent to its owner's hand, but now you will see almost every single bounce spell will say non-land. Discard cards, a lot of them will say non-land card. So land destruction's been nerfed, and other ways to get rid of lands from people's hands or on the board have been nerfed as well. And as a result, lands can be very powerful if their abilities aren't something that you can deal with. And Fields of the Dead's ability is not something that's easily dealt with. This isn't like a Castle Embrith where you're just giving creatures plus one, plus zero. This is a massive advantage generating engine 
that is very difficult to target. So the article continues um, with uh, Field of the Dead ramp decks represented 42% of the field at Mythic Championship 5 and maintained both a high play rate and win rate on MTG Arena and Magic Online. Due to the strength and prevalence of the archetype, its warping effect on the metagame, and the undesirable play patterns it creates, Field of the Dead is banned in standard for both best of one and best of three, unlike with Nexus of Fate in the past, where they only banned it in best of one. And this is something that I talked about as well, the whole Mythic Championship 5, and how we had a bunch of these deck lists submitted, and then all of a sudden they moved the, the banning date forwards and it's like okay this is an emergency ban based on the information that they got from mythic championship 5 deck lists now it's funny because they'll say in this case i want to be clear that the outcome of mythic championship 5 did not affect this bnr decision in order to collect and analyze a large sample of data discuss a decision and communicate that decision to our partners in rules digital and organized play ban and restricted changes require a certain amount of lead time therefore while the metagame leading up to and including Mythic Championship 5 was a factor under decision making, this change is not a dir direct reaction to the results of that event. In general, a single tournament is only ever part of the bigger picture, picture when we consider banned and restricted changes. So again, what I said was Mythic Championship decklist submissions are what influence this announcement. I was not talking about the actual results of the tournament because there's some people who will point to the results of the tournament and say, look, Golos was only one, one deck was Golos in the top eight. And they kind of gloss over the fact that nine out of the top 16 decks were Golos decks and go, well, it didn't win the event and therefore it can't be a problem. But it really did warp the meta around it. There's no, there's no doubt about it. So it continues onwards. Finally, we are aware of a few other community concerns regarding the standard environment, including that early acceleration into Planeswalkers can be frustrating and that the color green is strong across a variety of standard archetypes. Can I just take a moment to say, yeah, boy, I love green. And it's so rare for anybody to complain about green being an actual problem in magic. It's so nice to see that green has actually gotten some power to the point where people are like, curse you green, because normally it's curse you blue, curse you red, but now it's curse you green, baby. Green's at the top where it belongs. I love it. I love it. Anyhow, uh, let me just, let me just, since I went so far off track, let me start that paragraph over. Finally, we're aware of a few other community concerns regarding the standard environment, including that early acceleration into planeswalkers can be frustrating and that the color green is strong across a variety of standard archetypes. We will continue to monitor the health of the environment, but we feel it's important to allow the metagame to adjust to the absence of fields of the dead before further evaluation. As a philosophy, we prefer that players' deck building and metagaming choices drive the evolution of the environment whenever possible, rather than banned and restricted intervention. Now, I agree with this. Banning and restricting things as, as infrequently as possible is a really important thing, because these sort of bannings, they make people unhappy. Anybody who went out and bought Fields of the Dead in real life after the last ban and restricted announcement said there would be no bans, they're in a feel bad scenario. And it's almost like a broken trust with wizards where they went, look, the way it's supposed to work is you do one of these announcements every two months. I should have given, been given two months to use these cards. And then two days after you make the announcement and I go out and spend my money, you go, oops, we're moving this banned and restricted announcement up a full month, oops, the card's gone. So this leads to a feel bad scenario where people are leaving but at the same time, you do need to have this sort of balance or more people would go. Fields of the Dead is very unfun. It's hard to answer. And the most important part is how much it was warping the meta around it. Wizards of the Coast is making the right choice in not banning other things because it's hard to know if anything else is truly oppressive when Field of the Dead was warping the meta so much that you had to play particular archetypes to have any chance whatsoever of competing with them. So I think this wait and see approach is the smart way to do things. So that is the end of the announcement for the standard banning. Now we're gonna move into the banning of Arkham's Astrolabe and talk about the popper banning. Now this was one I did discuss in my video and said was a potential banning, but I put it lower on the, the chances I had this as uh, there was this, 
there was the Fields of the Dead, Golos, and Urza that I mentioned in the previous video. So obviously Golos doesn't need to get banned when it comes to uh, when it comes to the Fields of the Dead deck, because Field of the Deck's already gone. And Urza Modern, they're not they're not making any changes to whatsoever. So that that Urza thing, I was I was off base with that one. But I did have the Astrolabe as one of my four selections. There were other people who were talking about maybe how Ephemerate would get banned in Popper. At the time, I didn't even really know what Ephemerate was being used for. So to me, I just kind of waved it away and didn't think it would be that much of a problem. Some of what informs my thoughts of this sort of thing is the comments that get left on my videos. When I'm doing live streams, when I go and read my comment section, you guys actually end up giving me a lot of useful information in dribs and drabs. Of course, there's a bunch of other stuff that I have to sift through, but either way, I appreciate how all of you come together to help give me a wider perspective of Magic the Gathering, because I'll say right now, when it comes to the popper banning, I would not have had any clue about the Astrolabe being on the chopping block if I hadn't seen multiple people bring it up and then asked for more information about it and then taken a look deeper into it myself. So, popper. With the unification of tabletop and Magic Online, popper card pools earlier this year. Okay. The unified tabletop and Magic Online popper card pools this year. So they've allowed the metagame some time to adjust. In that time, we've seen Arkham's Astrolabe rise to become one of the most ubiquitous cards across popper archetypes. Because of the nature of the popper card pool, reliable multicolor mana bases have historically been a challenge for many decks. For, for those of you who aren't aware, Wizards of the Coast tends to put the best lands in the rare slot because they know that sells booster boxes. So as a result, when you're playing with Popper, which is just common cards, you are going to have very few good answers when it comes to multicolor producing lands. So as a result, anything that comes in that can help you mana fix is going to be desirable. But unfortunately, Arkham's Astrolabe is too good at that. So basically, reliable multicolor mana bases have historically been a challenge for many decks. The Astrolabe greatly changed this dynamic as the clear, easiest, and strongest choice for color fixing. As many decks would adopt the Astrolabe purely for color fixing anyways, it becomes free to gain additional value from it being a cheap artifact and a card advantage engine. It only costs one snow mana to put out, so you can play it with a land of any color, and it lets you draw a card when you play it. To some degree, the metagame has shifted towards selecting for the best, Arkham's Astrolabe deck. So again, we have a scenario where everything is warping around a particular card. In particular, we have seen three plus color Scred decks pick up substantial metagame share. And for those of you who don't know, Scred is a red burn spell that relies on you having snow covered lands. So they've seen three plus color Scred decks pick up substantial metagame share at times representing 15 to 20% of the field with a win rate greater than 55%. That's a pretty good win rate. Astrolabe not only gives these decks a smoother multicolor mana base, but also combines with Core Skyfisher, Trinket Mage, Ephemerate, and other enters the battlefield effects to grind out opponents with card advantage and efficient one-for-one -one removal. Red-white based Glindhawk decks have also maintained a strong win rate, generating card advantage in a similar way, but with a more aggressive game plan. Due to the metagame share and win rate of Astrolabe decks across the board, this card is banned in Popper. Underneath this top layer of Astrolabe decks, we've seen a healthy diversity within the Popper metagame, and we're looking forward to continued support for the format as it evolves. So as far as Wizards is concerned, Ephemerate itself isn't a problem to the degree where they need to nerf it. There are a number of ways to recur and reuse cards, but Astrolabe's ability to allow you to color fix was too preeminent. It was too across the board being used. And I can see this, honestly, this is something that I don't like about the current standard environment and modern as well is it, magic is turning more almost into like everybody playing five color or four color good stuff where you have access to too many colors. Part of, part of the beauty of magic and the balancing is the color pie where certain colors can handle certain things. And the more colors you try to put into your deck, the harder it is to balance your deck and the trade-off is you have more versatility in terms of answers and powers you can reach on, but at the same time, your ability to get the lands that you need and the color, the colors that you need specifically to actually cast all these spells is kind of what holds you back. For me, 
I like environments best when they're dominated by either mono-colored or two-colored decks. That, for me, is the sweet spot. With sometimes a three-colored deck, but the three-colored deck doesn't have enough reliability in terms of its mana base to always pull out solid wins. For me, I don't like it when people can reasonably easily build four or five color decks with no real problem in terms of acquiring the different mana. That, that to me, doesn't feel as nice. That's a personal preference, and you're, you're free to differ on that one. That's just, I recognize that that's just me. Now, I did say at the beginning of the video, something that sounded kind of weird. When I said, you should go on Arena and you should get Field of the Dead cards if you don't already have them. And that's because of how the Field of the Dead is going to be treated based on this standard banning. In all honesty, Wizards of the Coast is handling this very, very well. Here's how it's going to work. If you currently have Field of the Dead cards in your collection, for each one you have, you will be granted a rare wild card. So if you have a play set of Fields of the Dead, you will get four rare wild cards for those Fields of the Dead. Now, another thing I like about what they're doing here is they're not restricting this to people who had Fields of the Dead up till today. They're restricting this to people who had Fields of the Dead up until October 24th when the update happens. And what this means is if you don't already have Field of the Deads, you can go and spend your wild cards on those Field of the Deads. And then when the 24th rolls around, you will get your wild cards back. So anybody who already has Field of the Deads is going to be given wild cards to replace them. And anybody who doesn't have Field of the Deads can spend their wild cards, get those Field of the Deads, and then have the wild cards given back to them like three days from now. So essentially, it's getting free magic cards. Now, if you're going to play in historic or other formats, you will still be able to use Field of the Dead. So it's not a completely useless card. Granted, obviously you can't use it in standard, but also bear in mind that with the frequency of the banned and restricted updates now, the way Wizards does things, they're actually uncomfortable, not uncomfortable, they're actually comfortable with unbanning cards as well while they're still in standard. Look at Rampaging Ferocidon. It was banned for the majority of time in standard, but it was allowed to return near the end. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think that Fields of the Dead will get unbanned because I don't think that in standard, because I don't think that the problems that it brings to the table will be gone. You'll still be able to slap together a Golo stack or do other dirty nonsense with it if they unban it. But the potential is there. Either way, you lose nothing from spending your wild cards on Fields of the Dead aside from not having those wild cards for a couple of days. And to me, that's not really a cost. So if you don't already have Field of the Deads, spend your wild cards to grab yourself a playset. They'll be replaced for you. That way, if you ever want them for a historic, you have them. And Wizards is also going to update it so that when it comes to ICRs, the individual card rewards, you will not be able to get Fields of the Dead. So you won't get a Field of the Dead jumped on you by ICRs, which I really like. And they're also reprogramming the drop rates in the packages. So if you get Core 2020 packs, you won't get a Field of the Dead in your rare slot unless you already have four of every single rare from the set. So really the best thing to do is if you haven't finished your set of 2020 and you have the Mastery Pass, there are some core 2020 packs on there. So if you're close to finishing a play set of all the rares, you might get stuck with some Field of the Deads as your rares from the packs. That's the only scenario I can see where you're gonna have a feel bad moment where if you have almost, a, if you have a full set of core 2020, four of every card except Field of the Dead, then when you open booster packs, you're gonna get stuck with essentially a useless card at that point. So Wizards of the Coast has really narrowed down, really narrowed down the window of people who can be truly put out by the Fields of the Dead banning, aside from the people who are obviously dissatisfied that they can't use their deck anymore. And I understand that. While I am happy to see Fields of the Dead go, I completely understand the feelings of anybody who is frustrated by having a deck they enjoy playing getting banned. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't get to play it. But if it does disrupt the meta too much, that does mean you shouldn't get to play it. So I'm not somebody who advocates things need to be banned because I don't like them. I advocate things being banned because it's necessary for the health of the game. And I do truly believe that banning Fields of the Dead is necessary 
for the health of the game. So I stand 100% behind that. And I also stand behind the Astrolabe banning. Even if I don't play Popper, as I said, I don't like it when you can just play four or five color good stuff and maintaining a healthy balance and having the the having an environment devolve to the point where everybody is playing the same cards is not an enjoyable scenario to be in. So let me know what you guys think. If there's any reason you can think of to not spend the wild cards on Field of the Dead, something I maybe didn't think of, let me know in the comments below so other people can know that too, because I can't think of any reason not to spend the wild cards, but maybe there is one, right? Maybe. So either way, thanks for coming by. We're going to talk about that new upcoming Pioneer format that, by the way, by the way, we revealed that secret last night before the official announcement. If you didn't see it, me and Rogue Deck Builder did a live stream on the channel that's still up where we actually brought news of this to the people. It's kind of cool to be ahead of the curve on that. Anyhow, again, thanks for coming out, my friends, and I'll see you all later.